definitely be confusing to tip who to tip, how much, from food delivery drivers to the hotel staff. And what about all of these fees that we're seeing lately that we're I already know, we were paying? just talking about that. I know. So here to break us uh, break it down for us, sort it all out as NBC senior consumer investigative correspondent, Vicki Wynn. Good morning to you. Good morning. Good morning. I have to be Tuesday. honest, I was just reading about this. I didn't realize that there were some new laws about tipping without talking about wages in America. I think mm -hmm. that is the big battle that we have here. People say that you should be paid a living wage so that you don't have to rely yeah. on tips, but it's right. sort of out of control. So some cities have tried to address this pro uh, this issue. In New York City, for example, last summer, they passed a law that says if you work for an app-based delivery service, you're one of those drivers, you will be paid a minimum DoorDash. wage. DoorDash, okay. Uber, Grubhub. Okay. You'll be paid $19.56 an hour, and that will adjust for uh, each year for inflation, which okay. is great. In Seattle, they had this um, in January. They said, let's do it 2640 for de app delivery drivers, wow. which sounds great. But then there was a real uproar because suddenly it's, well, how much are we going to be paying for our meals and other, right. you know, the trickle down effect? Summer. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So now any day they're going to revise that to probably just under $20. Okay. In D.C., since January, they, they talked about this uh, raising the minimum wage for tipped workers to match non-tipped workers by 2027. So we're talking about servers at restaurants, mm -hmm. bartenders, to raise their wages slowly over the next few years. That might help alleviate some of the consumer tipping mm -hmm. issues that we're people still have. Tip because it's just what we do. Right, it's we are. But perhaps it won't yeah. be so, people won't be so aggressive about it. I mean, I just, was just talking to Dylan off camera, and she said that someone came to her door, she tipped on her sushi delivery, and they knocked on the door, she opened it and they were like, you didn't tip me enough. So uh, people can what? sometimes be aggressive right. about that. You've seen it on the doorbell cameras, too. Yeah. Wow. Right. Yeah. Well, let's talk about food delivery for a moment, because I think that's where a lot of folks get hung. Do you see a delivery fee? But so I'm confused. Like, yeah. do I tip? Do I tip on top of the fees? Right. Do I tip and on the food order? Do I tip at all? And what are all those fees? Sometimes people confuse those with an actual gratuity. So the public service announcement this morning is the delivery fee or the service fee. That is not the tip. It feels unfair. It, no. For example, DoorDash says their service fee is 15%, and they say that covers the cost of their service. The restaurant, the demand, like the time, the location, the distance, but that is not a gratuity for the driver. Uber says while some of their service fee may go to the driver, it is not considered a tip. And on the website for Grubhub, they say the service fee is, the delivery fee is not a tip. where does the delivery fee go? So the delivery fee things. is part of the cost of doing business. It's and delivered that's to the owner. Frustrating for <laughs> okay, so the service fee and, and the delivery fee. Right, and we're talking about $5 billion in those food delivery fees alone in 2022, which is why the government is trying to regulate some of these, yeah. what they consider junk fees. So the, the Emily Post Institute etiquette experts say tip 10 to 15%. There's debate over this, too, because what if you order an expensive meal? Are you tipping 10 to 15 percent because you ordered a steak and it still comes in a bag? Or what if you ordered McDonald's and your meal was $15? Mm. Are you, you know, it, should right. the tip be only based on the cost of the food or the delivery itself? So those are some factors people should consider. And also the difficulty. If somebody has to climb five flights of stairs yeah. right. or they came in the yes. rain or they had to drive really far yes. to get your right. order, right. maybe if you can be a little more generous, be a little more generous. Okay, okay so different kind of restaurant scenarios. You've got your typical yeah. sit- Post etiquette expert say 20 percent 18 to 20 percent still is considered the correct amount to tip when you are sitting down for a full service meal mm -hmm. um, but these days you're seeing service charges on some of your restaurant receipts mm -hmm. sometimes they say this is for the cost of health care for our workers if you have a service fee on your receipt and you're not sure if that is part of the tip always ask that is totally acceptable and if you're in a big group a lot of times they will add a service right. fee, and that yeah. is the tip so ask so you're not tipping additionally and then finally if it is a quick stop a coffee you know someone's just mm -hmm. handing you a donut it is totally up to you you're not right. stingy the emily post people say it's okay to not tip if you if you can't okay so let's talk about hotels and resorts i mean so you, sometimes you stay at a nicer hotel because of the good service yes. so are you to be tipping everybody that touches your bag everybody you come in contact with who do you tip so when you see the hotel invoice and it says resort fee or hotel fee you should always ask what does that cover Can can I use that toward the cost of my stay? Typically, that is not considered a tip. That is usually mo uh, money that you can apply either to your meals or in-room dining, that kind of thing. Okay. If you're on an all-inclusive vacation at a resort or on a cruise, typically the tips are covered. That's yeah. all included. If you have exceptional service and you want a tip and the staff can accept the tip, that's okay. When it comes to bellhops and the concierge and luggage or the shuttle driver who gets all your bags mm -hmm. onto the bus, 
$2 for that first bag, a dollar for each additional bag. If they bring it all the way up to your room, maybe a couple more dollars. This is really important with housekeeping. Yes. Two to five dollars a day, and you should tip Especially daily. Especially with my kids. Yeah. Right? If they're making a big mess, carry cash with you always for those singles, mm -hmm. and tip each day because it could be a different person each day oh, that's coming to clean your room. Here's a crazy thing. You go to hotels yeah. now, you ask for cash at the at the front desk. A lot of room to find cash. Yeah. Yeah. You would think that those service fees would cover an ATM machine. Uh, I would think <laughs> so. Thank you, Vicky. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Just ahead. Hey, here he is, Darius Rucker. Great. It has been nearly 40 years since Darius Rucker and his bandmates. Heartfelt story told through the lens of the songs that have shaped them the most, shaped them to the man. Uh, but not to give away too much, but I mean, this is a book that is. Let's read it. I wrote a little review for it. Why? 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 Why would you? <laughs> why would you put all of this out? You were really young when you decided. <laughs> well, I was watching the Flintstones too. <laughs> the funny thing is, like when I was twelve. It's what you're famous for now. Uh, I know it's, it's pretty deep. That yeah. voice. You talk a lot in this book about relationships you've had with, uh, with different celebrities, and one story stands out when you say that Woody Harrelson yes. saved your life. Yes. Mm. Absolutely. Wow. Have you talked about that moment since? We. I've seen him a million times since. Then. Humble. He wouldn't want to talk about. Mm. It. Yeah. Wow. Like, like for him, I'm. Yeah, you know, I think it's because we were never the cool band. We were never the critics' choice. That led to mm -hmm. a lot of the '90s groups that did go. Absolutely. Good to have you. Yeah. Good luck. Great to be here. Thank you. Guys. Tour. Yeah. Uh, that new memoir again. It's called Life's Too Short. It is out today, and tickets for the Hootie and the Blowfish summer tour on sale now. 50 dates. And you are 50. the cool band. I mean, let's just be honest yeah. here. <laughs> well, coming up, our series Food for Thought. got to head out for an assignment. Unfortunately, you left a little too early because <laughs> we've got a great Food for Thought. We're going to celebrate Jewish American Heritage Month by shining a light on a sweet, gooey treat that has been enjoyed for generations, the iconic babka. I got to visit the team at Bread's Bakery here in New York to learn how they're putting their twist on this beloved classic. For gatherings and parties, so before those invites start coming, we are going to brush up on our manners. And here with a refresher is etiquette. Most of the time of year, you're invited to barbecues and weddings and showers and all this kind of stuff. So what's the proper etiquette when it comes to RSVPing? All right, so if it's a, like a formal event, dinner party, um, always go. If, you've, if you sent yeah. that RSVP, you have to show up. Okay. If you didn't, you know, decline at some point. And also, be careful. Gift. A, a bottle of wine. Seems like that's what everybody's bringing. So that's the rule. Never show up empty hand like yeah. them. Yeah. Okay, so this next one is tricky. Let's say you're getting coffee with a friend or maybe you're grabbing dinner and they're running late. When can you say, you know what? I'm out. <laughs> what would your what would your Line. Uh, well, I, I would like, like this says 15 minutes, but I, yeah. I also get worried I start reaching out to people. Yeah, is that the first that step? Wrong. That's the first step. I think at 15 minutes, then just a little check in, a call or a text. Hi, just checking yeah, in. I'm still good. And 15 minutes with no contact. Right? Yeah, that's yeah. yeah exactly. Yeah. All right, okay. let, let's move on to phone etiquette and texting, Micah. So, so, how long do you have before? you've got to respond to either a text or an email. Okay, so there's a new, oh. but you want to make sure, you, you shouldn't feel pressure to, to write back yeah. so fast. And uh, I forget. I you know. forget, I know. We'll just pick up the phone and call. And call. Life would be so much easier. <laughs> if it's urgent, you should just call. I yeah. think people yeah. get shocked by a phone call nowadays. Oh, what? <laughs> Why are you calling? Yeah. Yes. What about emails? I mean, you do have off time from work, but I feel like the emails come in and you feel like you need to respond right away. <sighs> I know, on your own time, you shouldn't mm -hmm. feel that instant, I need to write back right away. But yeah, email is the number one method of communication um, nowadays within business. So. Yeah, I think yeah. you just have to kind of feel out your, your thing. So we're talking about what to wear. It's warmer outside, but a yes. quick refresh, let's say, about what you're supposed to wear to work. <laughs> okay, so believe it or not, the big question is, are sneakers okay? White sneakers for mm. summer, right? So they actually, in many office places, especially casual Fridays, white sneakers are fine. But for many companies nowadays, the yeah. tie is dead. And you know what's replaced it? The blazer. So the guys aren't wearing a tie. You know, exactly. like, how do I know if you even work here? Uh, how do I know? <laughs> I don't know. It's I don't professionalism yeah out and you get or you get an invitation and I, my wife and I have this argument she'll tell tell people well maybe yeah maybe now you know we're not going but <laughs> so just you always say it. no say yeah we're not going I think you alive that's in this true. case. Exactly. Don't Just say no. I think that's the best etiquette right there for sure. Yeah. Oh, Micah, thank you so thank much. You. Thank Always you. Always helpful. Me. Was good. <laughs> All right. Well, now that uh, we've figured out how to invite people and when we should let them know, let's get, bring them some food. Okay. Up next. Our today, Tony Goldwyn is live in Studio One A. Coming up on Hoda and Jenna, legendary supermodel Christy Brinkley opens up about her recent skin cancer scare. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.